Ambient Inclusion is a great way to get this very soft, smooth, shadowed look. It's a little tricky to set up from scratch, but you don't have to. There's a shortcut to speed up the workflow. And the first step is to like, subscribe, and comment. Actually, maybe that's the first three steps, but step four is to right click in your media pool, go to new fusion composition, hit create, and then you could double click on that to jump into fusion. I'm gonna jump into mine that I've started already. So you can see it is complicated. There's actually two ambient inclusion nodes and they have to connect both to the renderer and to the camera in the right way. And then we got this channel booleans that has to be connected, but that's all done for you. All you gotta do is click on effects and then click on templates. Make sure you have this magnifying glass selected so you could do a search, type in AMB. I, all right, so here's your scene here. I'm gonna zoom out and give myself some more room. Click and drag this down here. And here's your scene. I'm gonna press two to preview what they've got. And they've got the scene with some orbs and stuff. That's all done in this group here. This is where all the 3D objects are. And I want none of those. So I'm gonna select this and press backspace to delete it. Also, don't really need these two. So I'm gonna select them and delete them. Getting stuff nice and simplified. I'm not sure why this is here, this little bendy thing. I'm gonna click on it and delete it. I'm gonna put these nodes here in a better spot. Camera here, nice clean look, but we've got no 3D objects. All we gotta do is click and drag our text out here. I'm gonna also click and drag this 3D shape. So click the output of the text onto the merge. Same thing with the shape. Let's type in some text. All right. I'm gonna click on my merge 3D and press one to preview that on the left. Also, I'm gonna to go to effects and click that just to turn that off. Now I can see things a little bit more clearly and I wanna to click to make sure I'm on my text node and then I can move that in space here. I'm gonna click on my channel booleans and press two to preview that. And we could start to see the ambient inclusion look and I'm gonna click on my text again and just bring this back so it's just in front, something like that. And I can move it down also if I look at this at 100%, our camera is pretty far back in space. Click and drag on my camera, the blue arrow, I'm gonna move it on the Z axis and get whatever camera angle that you like. Okay, so what we need to do is extrude this text out. So with the text still selected, I can go to the text node up here to extrusion, extrusion depth. We could add a little bit of a bevel depth and bevel width if we want. Also for our shape, I'm gonna click on that. From plane, I'm gonna switch this to cube. And because it's selected, I could click on this blue arrow and just move it back a little bit. I want it to be really close to the text, but just not quite intersecting. And I could zoom in here so I can get a better look. Something like that works. Also with the shape selected, I could go to its transform, find the scale, unlock X, Y, Z, take the X, make that bigger. So we got a nice background. All right, now let's take a look at how we can dial in our ambient occlusion. So I wanna know what's what. This ambient occlusion, I'm gonna rename it. So I'm gonna select it and press F2, ambient occlusion. I'm gonna call this underscore narrow and do the same thing for this one. Select it, press F2, call this wide. And I'm gonna take the wide and I'm gonna to toggle it off for now by hitting that switch. I'm gonna to go to narrow. And I'm gonna make this just as tight out of a shadow as I can by dragging the kernel radius down. And I can take the lift and bring that down to darken things up. So you can see this shadow doesn't come out too far and that's what I want. Now I can turn this off, go back to the wide one, turn it on, and I'm gonna take its radius and bring it up. So you can see if it goes too high, you're not gonna really see things. I could take the lift and bring this down just to get it back, but I'm gonna bring this down a little bit more like that maybe now it's a little too dark let's fix it up and we've got these samples here you can see if things start to look blocky let's say if we bring this way down so the lower samples this will render faster but it's a much blockier look just bring this up you want to keep this number as low as possible but have things still look smooth so let's combine the two together by coming back to this top one turning it on and you can see that's the look that we got now the only thing is you'll probably notice things don't look very clean especially on these straight up and down verticals that have just a slight angle you'll see our anti-aliasing issues the one way to fix that is to take our render double the size and then resize it back down so i'm going to go to the renderer i'm going to go to image 
1920, and I'm going to hold on shift and press 8. So we got our asterisk, which is our multiplication sign. So that means it's going to be times 2. And we've doubled our width. Let's do the same thing here. Asterisk 2. Now we'll see. We're working at 4K, whereas we were 2K before. And then with channel booleans selected, shift space bar, R E S I, resize press enter and you'll see by default it should be set to 1920 by 1080 and if we preview that by pressing 2 you'll see it definitely looks better if i zoom in here you might still see some issues but you can see it's blended that anti-aliasing issue a bit if you want you could go to filter method go from linear to quadratic maybe even cubic that might help to smooth things out but the most important thing is to look at it at 100% and if it looks good enough then we're in good shape so now we're at the point where where I was when I first created this. So I'm just gonna jump over to the one I previously created because I spent a lot of time just tweaking the settings. Preview this by pressing two. So I'll click on my ambient inclusion and you can see the settings that I got for that one. That's the narrow one. And this one down here, this is the wide version. And these are just the settings that work for me. And I did change the font, but it's the same setup. And now let's take a look at how we could add some variations. So one thing that could be interesting, if we want a little control of just how narrow or soft this top one is, we can select it, press shift space bar, B-L-U-R. And then with this blur in here, what we could do is bring the blur size up. You get an interesting soft lighting look, which you may or may not want, but I think that's a nice touch. Another thing you could do is add some color to it. I'm gonna click the blur, shift space bar, C-U-R-V, and I'm gonna to go to color curves and hit add. And whatever color you wanna tint it, uncheck everything but that color. Let's say we want a blue tint onto this ambient occlusion. And then I'm gonna hold down alt and drag this over because I want it to go in a straight line. We could add another point in there and just press S to smooth out that handle. And then let's say we wanna do something with the reds. We could try adding some more points in here, if, see if it does something interesting. We could take this color curves, press Control C, grab this other ambient occlusion, press Control V. Under this color curves, I'm gonna hit the reset. Let's uncheck everything except for the red. Hold down Alt, and then I'll turn on the green, adjust the blue, see what happens if we add some points in here. Maybe come back to our original color curves. And after you set up those colors, you could come back into the original ambient occlusion nodes, start adjusting things like the lift, maybe also the radius. Go to our other ambient inclusion node, try adjusting the lift there just a bit. And we still got our blur we could come back to if we need to make some adjustments to sharpen things up a bit. And if you've missed steps one through three for this project, there is still time to like, comment, and subscribe. Isn't that convenient?